The transboundary water issues with fresh waters are a little different from those of marine ecosystems. These include lakes, aquifers, and rivers that flow across political boundaries. In the TDA SAP process, we have the transboundary diagnostic analysis, which is the scientific analysis of the issues and the strategic action plan or strategic action program process, which focuses more on the political side and how those issues in, from the transboundary diagnostic analysis is, are going to be used and addressed by the countries together. The TDA SAP process often takes several years. For the TDA, first you bring the countries together and you really work with their experts and international experts providing some guidance on identifying what are the major priority issues and concerns that are transboundary in nature and figuring out what evidence do we have from all of the stakeholders and all of the countries that show what those priority issues are and how those issues need to be addressed. The strategic action plan, on the other hand, involves more strategic thinking about how we're actually going to address those, what strategic planning is needed, and how we're going to implement those strategically. The main role of the TDA is to quantify and identify and set the priorities for the environmental problems that are transboundary in nature. To clarify, a transboundary issue is an issue that is shared because the countries are related and they're next to each other, and the water is flowing from one country to the other. A non-transboundary issue would be maybe mudslides. Yes, it's caused by water, can have transboundary impacts if it's crossing, if the mud flows are sliding from one country into another, but if they're only within one country, probably those are not transboundary. On the other hand, addressing transboundary issues can be especially challenging because water security is so important. In the TDA process, we're working together on the empirical fact-based information, and the TDA SAP process begins the process of bringing together stakeholders from all of the different water sectors, from agriculture, from environment, from municipal waters, from the social side, from NGOs and civil society and industry, all working together to address these transboundary issues and to identify those provide empirical information, and to look at what the causes and the effects are. We do this using a root cause or causal chain analysis. This root cause analysis gives us an opportunity to look at the priority transboundary issue that's been identified and start asking the question why. Why do we have ecosystem degradation in a river basin, for example? Why is the river ecosystem degraded? The primary cause may be pollution or habitat destruction or invasive species or natural pathogens. It can be all of those. It can be any other of those as well. But then there are additional issues. You need to ask, well, why do we have these problems? Climate change, definitely an issue, but that's often cross-cutting. And we need to look at those primary issues and ask again, why is this happening? Why are we having habitat destruction? Why do we have this pollution? Often we find, when we ask why again, that there are intermediate causes, such as unsustainable land practices, or there's a lack of information and a clear understanding of ecosystem processes, or maybe it's a segmented approach to natural resource management. Again, we have to go and we have to ask ourselves, why is that happening? Looking at the research and looking at the empirical evidence, we ask why. Over and over, we will find that it is a lack of economic valuation of ecosystem services or a lack of understanding and appreciation. Once we start to identify these issues, the immediate causes, 
and the intermediate causes and the root causes, we really begin to get a deeper sense of how complex these problems really are. Some would even say they're wicked. We also have to look at the, what the impacts of these are. Often, we will have looked at what the impacts are and not understood the impacts are not the causes. The impacts may be the loss of ecosystem services for ecosystem degradation or the reduced ability to mitigate other negative impacts such as climate, climate change induced droughts and flooding. And then there are super impacts, like a loss of income and the additional cost to government that happens because the ecosystems are so degraded. And often these priority issues are, in, are linked together and that can get very confusing and therefore you really have to untangle all of these together. From those, from the causal chain analysis, we realize recommendations can emerge and recommendations can bubble up from the transboundary diagnostic analysis. Those recommendations then inform the strategic action plan or strategic action program process. That process is much more political, though it does need to be based in the empirical scientific evidence. We have the TDA is a well-defined baseline that sets a clear distinction for where the problems are, what the problems are, and provides scientific evidence of what those problems, their impacts, and their causes actually are. The SAP itself, the Strategic Action Plan or Strategic Action Program, is a negotiated policy document that must be endorsed at the highest level. That means it needs to be signed by at least one minister in every participating country. And again, this is a very protracted process that often involves having reviews by multiple sectors and multiple approvals all the way up to the ministerial level. This then will establish the clear priorities for action and the governments by signing it are agreeing to take those actions to resolve the priority problems addressed in the transboundary diagnostic analysis. The SAP is a prioritized work plan for the way forward that needs to be endorsed by the governments and working together at the national and the regional level across sectors to implement the SAP once it's endorsed. And then once we have SAP implementation, it's taking the steps to address those priority transboundary issues, to resolve those root causes and intermediate causes, and to avoid those negative super impacts. Within the SAP implementation, additional evidence is often collected that can inform the changes that are taking place against the baseline that was established in the transboundary diagnostic analysis.